So we have ourselves a rainy day today. Trying to see which dogs want to go bye-bye. Who's going bye-bye with daddy? Uh, not in the front seat, girl. Gir oh my gosh. I put a towel in the, oh Lord. What are you gonna do now, Trixie? Where, how are you gonna get out of that spot? I put a towel in the back seat for rainy days. Come on. Get to the back. You can't get the... Baby, I have a towel in the back seat for you. All right. Thank you, ladies. I want to show you all the difference in this back pond compared to our front pond. So this is the back pond on the new property, the uh, JL Ranch property. And I want you to take a good look at it. This is the pond that I sometimes call Jake's Pond it, because it looks just like Jake's Pond. You see it, right? Look at the, the water. Uh, to me, it has a very muddy color to it, uh, just a muddy color. There's some pond-type vegetation that grows into the water. You can see that cows have been walking down here around the pond quite a bit. A lot of footprints, fairly fresh. So even though our cows have access to clean, fresh water, in our water troughs, they still will come down and drink from the pond. I don't always understand that, but I've read that there's a lot of minerals in this kind of water that they don't get out of the water troughs. Now we keep our water troughs very clean, and so you would think that that would be an animal's preference. And then if you ever think about it, maybe it could be laziness. They're like, if we're already grazing over here, why not just get a sip from this over here? Why should I have to walk all the way up to the barn? So maybe it's a bigger deal to us than this to them. I am not discounting clean, fresh water and access to clean, fresh water. Do not think that. I'm actually a proponent for folks to keep their water troughs clean and to give them choices when it comes to water. You guys already know that. But uh, I do notice all of the footprints and, I, and I've seen our cows walk down and sip from the pond. And I'm like, okay, they want to drink the pond water. I'm not going to put a fence around it and stop them. But now I'm going to drive up and show you guys the front pond and take one last good look. You're about to see a world of difference. Y'all ready? This water is crystal clear. You can actually see perch, lots of minnows, uh, turtles. It's just baffling how clear this water is. Now the entire floor of this pond is covered with some kind of a green growing pond vegetation I don't know what I don't know how deep this water is but I'll tell you it is it is crystal clear y'all and how can that be how can this front pond be so darn clear look at this fish there are so many fish this is like this is like a tropical uh, 
my goodness. It's like you're swimming in a coral reef somewhere. That's how clear this water is. I'm right here on the edge of the water. You can see the fish scattering, the minnows especially. Now this is the front pond and it's true. We are right here close to the, the front of the property, the highway. There's no kind of chemicals. There's no chemicals being used in either one of the ponds. There's a turtle popping his head up over there about halfway across. He just went down. But uh, this is just beautiful. Stella's like, I right, taste pretty good. Taste it tastes okay. I can I can get into this. needs to be cleaned up down here there's something over there and then uh, lots of dead limbs have fallen off into it and then you have so there's an old bucket over there but this front pond is just spectacular y'all it really is I would I would I would be curious if you was a toss a rod and reel across there if you'd be able to pull anything out I mean, there's nothing big, obviously, but listen, if you have this many small fish, these are like little feeder fish, right? Little minnows. That tells you that you can probably have, and then we saw those couple of perch swim off a few minutes ago, which are larger feeder fish. There could be some little fish out there. It's beautiful. All right, so we got our blocks all set up into our twisting feeder, a mineral feeder. We got our sulfur, our salt, and our trace minerals right there. Uh, this here is supposed to get them out of the weather. Let me show y'all real fast what happens to the ground when you just set your salt block out onto the ground. I want you to notice how all of the grass here in this particular area is gone. And if you look close enough across this entire pasture, you find spots just like that. And I wanna show you why. Now, I've done a lot of cleanup on this property. Uh, the fellow who took his cows off recently had, I mean, he was a fairly knowledgeable farmer or rancher, and he had salt blocks and mineral blocks set out all over the place, which was great for his animals, guys. They need that kind of stuff during, you know, to help them have their best life. But uh, we decided to go ahead and buy one of these. It was pretty expensive from Tractor Supply, but what it does is it holds all of your blocks for you. We have sulfur, we have salt, we have trace minerals, and the cows can walk up and eat from here. This little roof type thing keeps it kind of out of the weather, so you don't have you know rain and sun and all of the different factors that can to breaking it all down. Uh, and of course, there's holes that are put into the bottom. So if any rain does blow in, all of the, it can, you know, drip there onto the ground around it. Uh, but with this type of cover, I don't think you'll get a whole lot of rain unless it's kind of a blowing rain, which won't be a whole lot. But this is a pretty neat thing. It's a way to go ahead and give your animals what they need, but you can still protect the integrity of your pasture and not have big old spots, bald spots here and there where that salt can kind of eat into the soil and destroy all of your grass. I don't know why it does that. I don't know the science behind it, but up here on this hill, on the far hill, and uh, everywhere he's had those salt blocks setting out, you can just see patches of bald spot. But um, we will see how this works. I can tell the animals have already been coming by and nibbling on certain things. It looks like they're giving the uh, sulfur a whole lot more attention than the other two blocks. And ask me why, I don't know that either. <laughs> There's a lot of science here I don't know, but for some reason, they're letting me know that they're deficient in whatever the sulfur block offers them. They seem to be leaving the mineral block alone and they're not touching the salt block either, which means as of right now, the sulfur block is the one that I'm glad we have out because they will let you know what they need and when they need it. All right, these are the materials I need for framing out the little loafing shed. It's only gonna be a 12 by 12. Nothing gonna be big, but a 12 by 12. Everything's treated here. And then I'll come back and I'll grab the metal tomorrow 
but uh, I didn't want to grab the metal today. I want to do one step at a time. It's been a full day. We got the framing done on little man's loafing shed. I got water and food moved over. Got some green hay set there if he wants it. Got him a roll of hay over here. He has access to the entirety of the lot. Now my cows can still walk along this back fence and they have been, they've been trying to check him out, but uh, he can only go as far as there. And then my cows of course can come through if they choose to and they go from pasture to pasture. And uh, whenever they walk by, they always look at them and say, hi, I got some pretty nice girls there. You know it, but I will say they, they kind of belong to Waylon. I know, don't make that face at me. He's like, yeah, for now. Just wait till I'm healthy. Okay. Well, you know what? Prove me wrong then. Just prove me wrong. All right, it was a good day. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.